Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So it wasn't too long ago that I did a review on this handy dandy gadget called Fix the Mask. It's a mask brace that helps get a better fit for a mask. At the time that I did that review, I had tried it with the plain old disposable. This is the Ambrist mask, but I said I was going to try it with all different fabric masks, and I'm going to do that today. Yeah, first of all, I just want to say thank you and welcome. I see I've got a few new subscribers. And for those of you who like my content, if you haven't subscribed, I really hope you'll consider doing so. As I've stated before, I, I'm not growing my channel in the way of affiliate links with all kinds of commissions. A lot of things that I review on this channel, they largely have to do with people's health, well-being, safety. And I don't want to prey on people's fears and I don't want a room for bias that commissions would create. So that said, I do want to grow the channel. So I hope that you'll subscribe and please share with anybody else who might be interested. So guys, one thing I was thinking is that almost all of these uh, retailers, manufacturers with masks have been so kind and given us coupon codes. So I'm also going to review those during the course of this video. So when I introduce one, I'm just going to remind you guys, and I'm going to put them down in the description box as well. So Ambrist gave us a coupon code for 20% off. I believe it's Sandy 20, but I'm going to put it down in the description box, like I said. Now, one mask that's going to be noticeably absent today is the Synovia. My reason for that is it doesn't really make sense to me to try to get a tighter fit with a Synovia because the reason to get the tighter fit is because you're concerned about very small particle size that can get through if you don't have a good enough fit with your mask. So it'll come around the edges with some leak. And we're talking about particle sizes, you know, 0.3 microns, things like that. And if your mask is said to filter at 0.1 micron size, then you're talking about particle size 0.1 microns. Well, the Synovia mask is meant to filter at a 5 micron particle size. Now, that's plenty for large respiratory droplets because that's the smaller end of the sizing of large respiratory droplets. But really, then, enhanced fit doesn't change anything because the inhalation of large respiratory droplets is largely because of them falling its gravity. So it's not like you're, there's some random pattern where they're moving around like aerosols and they're going to get in because of the force of inhalation around the side. So the truth is, if you feel like you need that kind of an enhanced fit, then in that particular setting, the Synovia is not the right option for you. It's still one of my favorites, but I've gone over that in other videos. It's not in the scope of this video, but there are certain settings that I think are more appropriate for certain masks. And in those kinds of settings where I feel that the Synovia is not my best choice these days, I often use it as a topper because it has the profoundly antimicrobial activity. So I'm going to start out with the Starks mask. Now, I have not worn the Starks mask in a really long time, and largely it's because the DNA pretty much replaced it, it just with the enhanced fit. Let me put it on. This is one of the old ones, I guess. It doesn't have the adjusters on it. All right, so try to get this tucked under the chin. Guys, I've only gotten minimally more handy with getting this thing on. Okay, it's just, I can't seem to put this on and make it look like they do in their little instructional video on fix the mask. Okay, so I think I said in my previous video, they actually say you can just take the ear loops off if you want to. I'm, I don't walk around like that because I, I think it looks really weird, but I think it gives you a good sense of how the mask is fitting, and there definitely is an enhanced fit with this. Now, I will say that one of the problems I'm having is up here, and I believe it's because with this extra flap, which I actually like the nose flap on the Starks mask, but I think for the purposes here, it's making a lot of bulk. And I think it's very hard, it might even be the seam that's making the bulk, so maybe I put it up here. Yeah, I think that between the seam and the nose flap, you're going to have to decide how many layers you want this thing resting on. You know, it seems that this is very well suited for something like the Ambrose mask, which I showed before, and this is the kind of thing they show with it, you know, on their website. Whether it's going to work with individual fabric masks, I think, is going to depend very much on the mask. And what I found is the more bulk there is, I think the less it's really enhancing the fit. So I do think this is giving a better fit, but I don't think it's, it's certainly not as enhanced as the fit as I get with something like this that's so thin that it can really hold it down. So for example, 
I don't see a lot of sucking in and things like that, which I did when I tried it in my video originally when I tried it with the Ambrist disposable. So on that note, I figured I would try the DNA next, and I don't have high hopes for this. And frankly, I don't even imagine wanting to use something like a mask brace with this because the DNA just has such a good fit. I mean, I just don't get leak in this. I never have goggles leaking. Um, it's got a really secure fit around the chin. I, I think it's thick enough that I really only see this fix the mask brace sort of just kind of sitting on top of it. And wanting to roll around, I guess. With this pleating especially, this is a very thick mask. And I mean, I don't know how I would know anyway if this was enhancing the fit. Because like I said, I don't have fogging with my goggles. I don't feel much escape. You know, is it okay to wear it like this? Yeah, is it going to hurt? You know, no, not unless you're having to kind of mess with it all day, then that might be a problem. Now, one mask I've been really excited to try with the Fix the Mask Brace is, do you guys remember this, the Enro mask? It says, the perfect mask is here, you can breathe now. I reviewed this one a while ago, and I was just so disappointed because I had so much leak. And a lot of people said that it worked really well for them, and they liked it, and they loved that it was so lightweight. So I'm going to try it. And fix the mask brace and see what I get here. It is amply big and it's got this nice tuck under the chin. And I, you know, the review of this mask is beyond the scope of this video, but you can go back and see when I reviewed it. No matter how many times I do this, guys, I can't get it smooth. There, that was probably my best try yet. Yeah, I can see this is quite an enhanced fit, just to be sure. Yeah, I don't really see any fogging. Maybe the tiniest bit that I would barely perceive over here. Yeah, I think that does really enhance the fit of the Enro. Yeah, and then finally, I've been wanting to try it with this one. This is the Pure Organic. And by the way, did I not say the coupon code? So the Pure Organic, we actually got a coupon code for 50% off. I believe it's Sandy's Health. And I'll, I'll put it down in the description box. There's no apostrophe. I think it's just S-A-N-D-Y-S-H-E-A-L-T-H. But 50% off. And these come in packs of five, I believe. I liked the mask. I thought it was a great idea, except for I did get a lot of leak with the shorter nose piece. But the amazing thing about the Pure Organic mask is that despite the fact that it's like the lightest, thinnest mask I've ever held or put on my face, maybe besides the Synovia, it was incredibly watertight. But without the ear adjusters and without like a very long nose piece, I was just getting way too much leak for this to even feel remotely safe. But I think that with the Fix the Mask Brace, this might be perfect. Now, by the way, with Fix the Mask, there is a do-it-yourself version that you download, and I think you make it with rubber bands or something. Like I said, I'm, I'm handy, but I, I'm not handy enough for that. And I thought, actually, I didn't realize this was going to be all silicone. Um, you know, I thought that would be an issue with the rubber bands, but it turns out it's an issue with the one that you purchase already made because it's always pulling my hair. All right, let me just make sure I get this where I've got enough fabric and it's not right at the edge. Uh, you always want the brace to be well within the borders of the mask. Okay. Yeah, all gone. Maybe there's a tiny bit. Not a problem. I mean, really barely perceptible. I wonder if I could improve it by picking this up a little bit higher. Yeah, I think this will work. 
I think this is a good option, guys. If you want something, I know people are always saying they want something really light and really breathable. And unfortunately, you know, in my experience, that usually means something that leaks or something that's not that effective. And, you know, this one, I think you have to make sure that that water resistance, it will break down over time. And I think you have to watch for that. And I said that all in the video, but I think if you're gonna combine it with something like a mask brace, this might be just a really good option for, you know, people who just really need something lighter. There are people who are kind of claustrophobic about the mask. There's just nothing I felt that's really as lightweight as the pure organic, but I just didn't feel like it was going to work for me. I think it would work for me if I were willing to use a brace. Yeah, so not to be totally redundant, because you can go back and watch the review that I did where I <clears throat> had a thorough discussion about this fix the mask brace. Yeah, you know, I still do have issues with it pulling on my hair. As you can see, it's not like particularly simple. And I think that's largely because it does, it, there's a certain amount of traction with just this rubbery type material that it, it pulls on things and it rolls on things. And so it's, it's not as easy as they make it look, at least not for me. Let me know if any of you has any tricks that you've found that this is easier to put on and off. I, I'll only use this in a setting where I feel like I can just let go of it. I don't wanna be sort of having to adjust it and deal with it all day or it kind of defeats its purpose. But you know, that said, I did get some comments from people saying, look, I think this is a very reasonable price to pay. These are, they come in a pack of two for 30 something dollars. And if it's just gonna enhance any mask, that's a huge benefit to the wearer. So I, I would be inclined to agree. I think it works great with what it was designed for, which is the disposable masks, like the Ambrose, which I showed. But I also think that it will work with some of these fabric masks. I just think that it's going to have to do with the bulk. From what I've noticed in trying it, the bulk really makes a difference or the lack thereof. So the DNA being the bulkiest mask, it just doesn't really add anything at all. And by the way, since it doesn't add anything, I don't think we needed it in the first place. The Starks mask, I think, could use a little bit of a fit boost on me. And that's really why the DNA kind of replaced it. But I think that being that it is as thick as it is, I think that it's not really a good match for me with the Fix the Mask. Because with this much bulk, the Fix the Mask really can't compress it down that much. But therein lies the reason that I think it works really great uh, with the Pure Organic mask. And I mean... I will use this. I will use this combination together uh, where I said that I would really only be interested in using the pure organic in a setting like outdoors or something. I would use these two together to enhance the fit of this and feel much safer and much more comfortable in lots of different settings. So if you really want something light, this, this, this might be a nice combo for you. All right, so let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you guys are using this thing much. You know, the next thing would be whether you want to get into respirators. I've said before, I'm personally not going to get into respirators on this channel because I think with a respirator, it really has to do with the testing. So I did a video talking about another channel. So I'm going to send you over to somebody else's channel because there is a channel on YouTube. It's uh, Aaron Collins, where he actually is an engineer by training and he is able to test these respirators with various kinds of equipment that he has. I did have a viewer who was kind enough to send me a few to try out, a few disposable respirators, uh, KF94 and such. But the thing is, I just can't vouch for them without knowing exactly what the filtration is, and that really requires testing. Beyond that, they're no different than masks. So if you get a KF94, it's basically like a thin mask with ear loops, and it's really all going to depend on the fit. It's really just about how it fits you. And so I don't feel that, for example, I'm really any better off with a KF94 than I am with something like a DNA mask, just because this fits me so well, and I know you know what level it, it's been tested. So I just think I'm going to stay away from the respirators because I don't feel like I can give a really valid recommendation one way or another without that testing. So let me know if this was helpful and let me know if you guys have any other tips or tricks or ways that the Fix the Mask Brace works or masks that it particularly works well with. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.